I'm Maria Gretti. I don't make close friends very easily. I am a bit shy and I suffer from stage fright. I, you can actually call me Maria Goretti petrified because at the moment I'm shaking in my wedges, ready to spill my innards. But then again, hi, I'm Maria Goretti, XMTV VJ, television host and model. And you know, actually both these descriptions are bang on. So I used to be an MTV VJ who used to get into crowded arenas and scream out to people saying, hey, Pune, how are you doing today? Make some noise for me. That was my job. So I had a job where I had to introduce the most amazing singing sensations of the world and interview them. People like uh, Ricky Martin, Enrique Iglesias, Brian Adams, right to our very own Dalair Mehdi, Sonu Negam, Shan, Mika. But that was me, a girl with the world's worst stage fright. And it's still not gotten better. <laughs> so I was someone who till the age of 20 really never knew how to swim. In fact, I didn't learn how to swim because I was too awkward to get into a swimsuit. But last year I went and I did my certification and now I'm an advanced paddy diver. I have, I, I, I have never won a single race throughout my school and college. In fact, I was the girl, they would put the red ribbon for and say, run Maria, run. I was that person. But next Sunday, I'm going to try and attempt my second half marathon. I am petrified of, of the dark. I don't like sleeping alone at all. Okay, but today I am dragon slayer for my two kids, Zeke and Zene. I, I never knew what I wanted to do in life. I just didn't. And I definitely did not want to cook. But I just want to tell you that everything will be all right. That's how it is. <laughs> so, so my parents, like um, any of your parents, were very, very strict. But there was one thing that they told me that kind of stuck with me. They always said, uh, don't do anything in life that you're going to be embarrassed about at any point of time in your life. And that kind of stayed with me. It's still with me. You know, um, my family, like uh, any of our families, is totally messed up. But uh, what I remember about my children, even now, is all of us cousins getting together, my uncles, aunts, all of us cooking, and every time we all met, it used to be this big celebration. My grandparents were amazing cooks. Talking about grandparents, my, my maternal grandma, she, she had Parkinson's. And, you know, she used to walk around with her hands shaking like this. And every time she would see uh, us grandchildren walking around, she would say, Get me a typewriter, let me write you a story. You know, what is the use of having Parkinson's if I cannot write and type all the time? I, I had never seen her with a scowl on her face. I always saw her smiling, beaming. My paternal grandmother, on the other hand, was called Rambling Rose because most of the time I would see her packing to go on holiday. I'm quite like her, I love going on holidays. Now, when she got older, I used to actually go in search of her and find her neighbors' houses, drinking tea, laughing, and discussing recipes. She had Alzheimer's. So I'm thinking between a whole lot of moving and shaking and not remembering, I think I'm going to be a happy trooper in my old age. <laughs> so years ago when I used to do interviews, journalists used to ask me, uh, what is it that you want from life? And I would say I want to be happy. And that is true for me even today. All I want to be is happy. And they would say, yes, but what do you want to do in life? Well, I want to do things that make me happy. Why is it that being happy is so underrated today? Isn't that what we all want in life? So anyway, in search of this happiness, I started working at the age of 17. I sold pastries because I loved eating them too. And then a few years later, I started dancing and I was part of this uh, jazz troupe and I danced for very long and my parents really thought it was a big waste of time and a waste of money because I got 250 rupees for a show and my father spent more than double of that to get me to the auditorium to perform. So, any which way. Um, well, a lot of work later, I took part in the MTV VJ hunt and I got chosen. 
that really changed my life. Suddenly I was traveling all over. I was meeting really exciting people. And I was totally stoked when I got sent to cover the VMAs. And I stood there at Radio Music Hall, relaying to India Live, still dying in my stilettos. <laughs> you know, after MTV, I did cricket without knowing the sea of cricket. And I remember I covered the World Cup in 2003 from South Africa. I met cricketers from all over the world. And I had to read up about them because I was just somebody who never grew up knowing anything or following cricket. So that's what I did. And while traveling and doing all this, I remember I went to this place called Hermanus. Now, Hermanus in South Africa is a place that you go to for whale watching. And I remember crossing the road and there was this huge cliff, okay, in line with the road. And I walked to the edge of that cliff and I saw a bench there. And I sat down on that bench and I could see the waves dashing from down below and the sun was setting and the entire, the entire sky was ablaze with, you know, beautiful colors of gold. And as I sat there alone, I... I there was this peace that descended upon me and I just knew that I was done. My journey that started at the age of 17, I was done with it. I don't want to put makeup on my face anymore. I don't want to ask any crowds, hey, how you doing? No, I was not interested. I just wanted to stop traveling. I just wanted to go home. I just wanted to be home. I just wanted to have kids. And that's what I did. Today I have uh, Zeke who is now 12 and a half and Zene who is nine and a half going on, I think 16. <laughs> so kids just completely changed my life. It was a different kind of busy, it was a different kind of fun. You know, but somewhere down, the realization dawned on me that yes, so here I was, this, uh, having this degree in economics and all this work experience behind me, but I had no real skill. And I, just like that Whitney Houston song, Where Do Broken Hearts Go? I began wondering, so where do ex-VJs who become mommies go? What happens to them? You know, music used to be my life, it used to be my passion, but at this point of time, it was like a lover who just refused to grow up, 18 till he died. So, so what happens when I have no more music to play and I don't want to get into lycra dresses anymore? Well, at that point of time, Zeke was turning three and had to be fed real world food. And I could barely boil rice. <laughs> At which point of time, all my mom used to keep saying to me all the while, just came flashing back. She would keep telling me, you need to learn how to make rotis. And I'd be thinking, here I'm studying, I'm traveling the world, I'm doing all this, and you want me to make rotis? I said, I'm going to just eat bread. And she would say, okay, but what are you going to feed your kids? And I would say, you know, I will just order in. Well, standing there with that ravenous, curly-headed kid on my hip, I kept thinking, is he going to grow up saying my dad is the best cook in the world? <laughs> From where I was standing, that was completely true. And so, I started learning how to cook. One slice of French toast at a time. And every time I would feed Zeke, you know, he would finish everything in his plate and he would smile at me and my heart would just burst with joy. And all I wanted to do was learn how to feed this kid. And because of him, I actually started cooking. I learned how to make risotto. I started going to local food markets. I started finding produce that I could, you know, convert into food that I could eat. But most of my trials actually were pretty disastrous in the beginning. So I decided to make Arshad, my husband, my guinea pig, my science laboratory and my test tube, okay? <laughs> so then I would cook, I would serve it to him, and then I would observe him. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, if he started sweating, I knew that the vegetables had too much chili. If he had heartburn, I knew that the vindalu had a little extra vinegar, okay? If he had a stomach upset, the chicken was not cooked. <laughs> and if he went out to play cricket, which was really mean, I knew the muffins were really hard. So I really, really struggled in the kitchen. And I remember one day Arshad sat me down and 
and said, you know, I want to talk to you about this new business proposition. Have you ever thought about getting into the construction business? Because, you know, the bread that you make. <laughs> but, but the fact of the matter is, I'm not someone who scares easily. And I'm also not someone who gives up. I only give up after I have tried more than 100% of me is when I will say, okay, I can't do this anymore. And so I decided to go back to college. So I joined Sapphire's Polytechnic again. Again, because the last time I was there, I was doing fashion design. So I go back to college, I walk into college, and I look around and I'm thinking, kids. There are all kids around me. I was like, how did this change? Little realizing that I had grown up. I was a mom of two kids, ex VJ Maria Gretti, getting back into a college with kids. Well, I did baking there for one year. In the beginning, it was a bit odd. But frankly, if you knew me, you'd know that I am odd and I'm completely fine with it. So I just continued. At the same time, I remember I got. Um, a television show, a television show that had to do with food, and I jumped at it. While I was on that set, I realized that more than hosting the show, I wanted to be with the ones who were cooking, who were chopping, sorting, boiling, brewing. I wanted to be with them. I realized that I had found something that I did not know I was looking for. I found a new love. I found a new passion. I found something that was deep inside me, you know, jumping to come out. And so I decided that I needed to dive into this ocean of culinary bliss. But the thing is, I first needed to know how to dive. So I decided that I'm going to go to chef school. And so I joined Tante Marie in 2011 to do my Cordoba Bleu certificate course in food and baking. And when I went to college with my chef knives and my chef whites every day, walking in with 65 other food enthusiasts, I cannot tell you the joy, the love, and the happiness I felt. It was just something that, you know, immersed me with so much of zing that that just transcended down into everything that I do till today. There was, there was, there was immense pleasure in just standing in a kitchen from 9 o'clock in the morning to 4.30 in the, e in the evening. I, I, cannot, I cannot explain it, but I feel it. I always feel it. But the fact of the matter is I could not have done this if, if Arshad had not stayed home and looked after my kids and doubled in as mommy, nanny, and nursemaid. And I have to thank him for that. So a year before I actually went to culinary school, I started writing my blog. So I had no clue about writing, I had no clue about cooking, but I decided that I needed to write this blog. And so I started this blog, and I used to write all my experiments on it, and I used to write. And uh, basically, I had a lot to say that I could not say to people, so I was busy writing it. And at that time, when I was writing it, I was not really concerned about, is anybody reading it? Is anybody not reading it? You know, um, if they were reading it, what were they thinking? These were my thoughts. Were they judging me? All that did not matter to me. I, you should never be bothered about that. For me, it was catharsis, and I just continued writing. Well, apparently, it was being read. It was being read by people who do food. It was being read by people like you and me who are learning. It was being read by publishers. And I got offered to do a food book. I was totally stoked. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. But cool does not mean that it does not have lots of hard work and heartache attached to it. This book took me two and a half years of hard work and discipline. So at times, I would be cooking like a magician. Okay, and at times, I would be writing like there were, you know, 10 authors inside me. I would just be writing. And then on some days, I would just be sitting and not a word would come out of my head. And I could not even complain that I have writer's block because I was not a writer. And I, some days my, my food did not match to what I wanted. And somewhere inside me, I was feeling probably 
I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I, I, I'm not a chef. I, I don't know, I'm searching. Anyway, my book released a year ago. It's called From My Kitchen to Yours. And, um, <laughs> and uh, a month after that, I went to a restaurant for a meal because I love eating. And uh, the chef there is a very, very renowned chef. And I had a beautiful meal and I went into the kitchen and I uh, wanted to congratulate him on the spectacular meal that I had just eaten. And he shook my hand and said, thank you, Chef Maria. You know, my heart stopped. I, I just stood there, like, and I did not know what to say. So I just kept looking at him. And he said, oh, is everything all right? And I said, oh, yeah, the, the soft shell crab was amazing and the gravy with it was delectable. I could not tell him what I was thinking inside me. I was standing there thinking from a girl who could not even boil rice to Chef Maria. He had just put sparkles all around my culinary adventure. I just felt so good. I just felt that all the hard work, all the toil, everything that I did has actually come to this. So today I do a lot of food, okay? I'm cooking all the time. Most of the time I'm cooking for my kids, Zeke and Zene, who of course are my sous chefs and they sometimes tell me that this is how you make this and this is, should be the color, this should be the texture. I think you made the pieces of meat too big. I think this vegetable is not cooked right. And I sometimes listen to them because they come up with some really amazing experimental stuff. But I also do menus for restaurants and I also do lots of demos. In fact, I think if you send me a two-way ticket to like a really amazing place, I will cook out of your backyard. I'm fine with all these kind of things. <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, I just want to tell you that food for me was not just food. It was about me finding that space inside me, my, my quiet place, a place where I could do what I wanted to do with full freedom, without any expectations, without any judgment. It was my happy place. You know, and the fact of the matter is that you must go out and do things that make you happy because the rest will follow. Yep, thanks.